Hello, my name is Andrew O'Brien, founder of Anakali Vision and Design, and this is the Font to Mesh Express Converter, FMEC for short, tutorial. Font to Mesh Express Converter is a poser application, a poser plugin, which allows you to convert true type fonts to 3D mesh objects. Um, so let's open up FMEC. As you can see, the interface is a very simple one. Um, a lot of my applications, you'll see that I believe that uh, by and large, less is more. Um, as you can see, you have the 3D, the eventual 3D mesh in 3D space. If you left, hold the left mouse button down and move left to right, you will rotate the object as so. Go up and down, you will bring the object to the fore and background. If you have a wheel, you can rotate the object even more on your mouse. All these uh, different features just give you an opportunity to view the 3D mesh and in, 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 view the mesh in 3D space. And the way you choose a color for FMEC is uh, you use the three um, perimeter dials: the red value, green value, and blue value. That makes up pretty much any color. Um, you already know this if you've worked with. Um, Adobe, uh, you know, Fireworks or Flash or um, any kind of graphics tool. Okay, Photoshop for a lot of poser users. Let's say I want it uh, the color of the text to be red. Okay, I'm gonna drag that over. Drag the green value over to zero and red by itself. Give you red. In the spirit of the up and coming holiday, let's say we needed a really cool Halloween font. Now, there are tons of free fonts online, free interesting fonts online. And if you go online and, and look for some, you'll find some very interesting ones. There's a cool Halloween. Everybody's so interested in wingdings, but wingdings aren't the only interesting uh, fonts out there. Let's say I wanted to just say. Boo isn't very interesting. Let's say we want, let's just say Smith Micro. Okay, as you can see, we apply, and Smith Micro will result. Also, you can also uh, use the uh, arrow keys to change the position of the object so you get a better view of it. Uh, here are the number of vertices in this object. If you want to reduce the number of vertices in the resultant object, you can change the precision of you change the precision of the object the precision as you look pretty closely you'll see that the object is not as smooth when you the smoother you know when the precision is set to zero the object is at its smoothest when it's set to 100 the object is at its uh, roughest kind of but you can see the number of vertices reduces and as we know the fewer faces, the uh, the less defined the object is going to look. The less smooth the object is going to look. We can have the wireframe view of the object. Uh, we can bold the object, which is very visible when you change the extrusion. The extrusion, I didn't want. As you can see, it just kind of pulls the mesh out in in the z direction, and I didn't necessarily need a large extrusion number because you can extrude inside a poser. Um, but as you can see, uh, we can also italicize the object. Let's take the bold off. And I don't really want italicized. Well, let's say we do want italicized. Let's move this back so we can see it some more. Uh, we do want some kind of extrusion on the object. It's just a much better um, mesh when it's some sort of extrusion to it. So you may want a flat object inside of, um, inside of your poser um, scene. Uh, Font to Mesh Express Converter allows you to export in as either an OBJ file or a poser prop. The difference being that the OBJ file will have an accompanying uh, material file associated with it, which will define its color, whereas the poser prop will have that information inside of the Python script. So let's say we want to save it as a poser prop. You do not need Python installed on your system in order for this to work. Let's say we just name this Font 1. And we minimize uh, FMEC, we maximize Poser. We go to File and we want to run Python script. 
we search for the Python script, which is font one. And as you can see, here is our resultant mesh. Now you can reduce the size of the mesh if you think it's too big for you. There it is right there. It has all of the common dials associated with any of the props that you import or already have inside of Poser. Say you want that kind of view right there. And you know, I don't have a particular idea for the color. Uh, there they are. I said we wanted the backgrounds to be darker so we can highlight the color here. Okay, let's bring it down a little bit. No, 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 no. Yeah, let's bring it. I forgot. Still got the color on. Edit. Change material color. Picker. Come down. Uh oh, we changed it to black still. Uh, color. You can also change the color in Poser, of course. Let's say we are ready to render. And it is calculating, calculating. And viola. Just that fast, here's our mesh. And it is completely ready for your post-production needs. Or you can save the resultant. Uh, you can save this mesh and your library as a prop and there you have it it's a very simple tool to use but I think it's very powerful you see um, a number of kind of these types of utilities on the market but none at this price range the free ones do not support all true type fonts and if you try them out you will see that some of them you know just come up with some really horrendous results whereas this one will accommodate all Microsoft true type fonts as of right now um, it's not compatible with other languages um, some may work some may not but we don't guarantee I don't guarantee that any of them will work uh, but there's there's a wealth of different fonts out there for you to try out um, thank you very much for viewing the tutorial this has been Andrew O'Brien from Inoculate Vision and Design and this has been the Font to Mesh Express tutorial thank you very much and have a great day